Hey there, Life Groups. I hope you guys are having a uh, fantastic evening together uh, and, and week so far. Um, and I know that a lot of you guys are you're gathered together. You've probably just eaten dinner and, and had a good time talking and fellowshipping and all that stuff. So it's just, uh, it, it always kind of warms my heart when I make these videos to think of, of when, when you'll be watching them and uh, kind of what's going to be going on in, in that house uh, that you guys are gathered at and, and the conversations that are going on, the things that are going on. Um, the words that are being spoken of, of comfort and, and prophecy and scripture and prayer um, all around good food that um, can be really impactful in our lives. And, you know, that's that's always our vision for these life groups is that it wouldn't just be something to do on a Tuesday or a Wednesday night, but it'd be something that has a great impact on your life. And so tonight, the, the sermon uh, from Sunday that we're going to be talking about um, it kind of had two aspects uh, to it that, that really hit me. It hit me in two different ways. Um, the, first of all, a lot of you ladies uh, were not there. You were you're up at the retreat having a great time. So men, uh, I'm assuming that you guys are really going to have to lead and drive the conversation tonight. Guys, I know it's not easy. I know you just worked all day, but uh, you're going to have to step up step up your conversation game tonight and uh, kind of talk about what, what we learned this Sunday and um, share with the ladies who weren't there. Um, and ladies, jump in as well, because this is a topic that really uh, should hit home for all of us as believers. And it's the topic of evangelism. Uh, you know, um, and I was, as I was saying, uh, Sunday's sermon really kind of hit me on two, two different fronts. Um, in that it, it just, first of all, it gave me the gospel. And I loved it. I love that there's power in the gospel. I love that the gospel transforms people. I, I, I actually love and it's freeing that I can't transform people. Um, and I, ca I can't save people uh, or, or any of that. I love Trent just expounding what the gospel is. It's just, those are precious truths that should hit home to us every time it's preached to us. And every time we preach that gospel to ourselves, um, it should be constantly just, just kind of churning over in our heart. Um, and that, that flame, that passion for Jesus and, and what he's done for us in the cross should be constantly just, just igniting our lives and, and be the driving force in our lives. Uh, but then the second aspect of the sermon um, was that I must preach the gospel. It was actually Trent's, Trent's second point on Sunday. And um, that for me is the convicting thing. And I, I, I think maybe a lot of you would identify with me in that there's this area of our Christianity where there's just a lack of obedience to share the gospel with our neighbors. Um, and how, uh, you know, I just thought of how unloving how unloving I must I must be towards my neighbors to not share the gospel with with them, you know. At least those I've built relationships with, and those I'm, you know, wave to as as I'm passing by them as we go to and from our our home our homes and our front doors and that sort of thing, um, you know, just people I meet at, at you know Starbucks who are making my coffee or whatever it, it may be. Um, how unloving of me to not share the power of the gospel. Um, and how untrusting I must be in the Lord to not think that he can take even what, what may come out to be a completely awkward conversation where I'm rejected or it just doesn't seem to go anywhere. Or it just feels completely uncomfortable. Um, we have to die to ourselves in those moments. Uh, it may be for me, it's, I have to drive to my, my introvertedness. Uh, I have to die to my pride and not wanting a, a, an awkward conversation. I have to die to to everything in me that feels like it's just a waste of time. I have to die to those things. I have to die daily to these things, sometimes moment by moment to those things, um, and realize that I'm on this earth for one purpose. And that's, um, you know, the, the reason I didn't just die and go to heaven as soon as I got saved is that I could kind of take as many people with me as I can. And then, and, and obviously, what, what frees us to do that is this understanding that God's doing the work. It's not me. Uh, we're just conduits of his love. We're just conduits of the message. But that does mean we have to open up. We have to open our mouths and we have to preach it. And, and that's the only way we're going to see guys like Mario, who spoke and, and gave an amazing testimony Sunday morning. That's the only way we're going to see guys like that and, and girls like that come, come to the faith and come to know the Lord and be rescued from the pit of hell and sin and death. Just just like we were, just like someone did for us. And so uh, I love you guys. I pray that you guys are stirred and challenged and provoked. I pray this conversation wouldn't just stay 
and Sunday morning sermon and stay in your conversation night. You guys would even think collectively together as a life group, how do we get involved in the Great Commission? Not just ends of the earth. We've talked about that with SGWM and, and all of those things and supporting missionaries. But how do I get involved in this with our neighbors? And, and man, it's so much easier as a group to come and put your heads together. There's accountability there. And, and there's a sense of, of, I'm doing this with someone else. Someone else is going through the same thing. Someone else is having these awkward conversations. We can come together week after week and talk about how, how this area of our, of our Christian life has been going. So love you guys. Pray that you have a blessed conversation the rest of your night. Uh, God bless and see you guys soon.